Hello, I am Andrea Stella. I'm the author of The Debugging Book, and I'm here to present you a new chapter. What you need for your current project. So today we're going to talk about interactive debuggers, which is actually the standard mode of uh, debugging a program if you don't have a graphical user interface. We're also going to very briefly look into graphical user interfaces just for the fun of it. So um, actually, actually, this is a really, really simple thing conceptually. And, and again, we are lucky to have Python as our programming language because Python is the language probably in which it is the easiest at all to build a debugger. Let me go right into our chapter and I will, <clears throat> and I will very briefly, actually, we don't need much time for that, walk you through that. So let me see what I can do here. Here is my new little lab. Okay, great. You should be able to see my screen at this point. Wonderful. Okay, so here's our chapter for today. This is how debuggers work. I'll make this a bit bigger such that it's easier to read later on. And this builds directly on our tracer infrastructure from uh, from previous week, and what we what we're building in here is a debugger, as a subclass of tracer, which actually gets us an interactive debugger. And there is just one very simple thing that this debugger does, and this is illustrated in this very uh, in this very short piece of code, which I'll be happy to which I'll be happy to talk about here. What a debugger does, an interactive debugger does, is again, like a tracer, it has a function that is called with each and every line or call of the program. But now, instead of simply printing things out, what the debugger does is it actually goes into an interaction loop with the user. And this is precisely what we have in here. So we're having a command that says input. And this actually calls an input from the command line. And then it executes this command and then it continues interacting with the user. That is, as long as this internal variable interact is being set. What such a command can also do is it can turn off the interaction and then program execution continues until the, until the next condition for halting is met. What a debugger typically provides is uh, so-called breakpoints. A breakpoint, well, is a line in, is a location in the program. On, uh, and when this line is being reached, then, uh, the, then again, we stop execution of the program and enter the interaction loop such that you can look at variables and everything. But instead of a breakpoint that is a single location in the program, you can also specify a break condition and then this condition is evaluated and checked every time you reach a new line. This is actually all there is. The secret is in this small little function input. What does input do? Well, that's very simple. If you call input, well, let's make that x equals input and then you have a prompt. So here we go, something like that. What happens if you execute that? Well, you get the input prompt and then you can enter something. Well, let's enter something, something, or something. Here we go. And now you can check out the value of x. So, and you will find that this is precisely what has been read before. So, nothing too magic in here. This is, and the nice thing is, this actually also works in uh, the Jupyter Notebook. So, you can actually interact with your tool in the Jupyter Notebook. This is what our debugger uses to actually implement a couple of commands. So for instance, we have a step command, which allows you to go to the next line. And we have a continue command, which now goes and, um, which now goes and resumes execution till the very end. And all we need to do is we set up this execute thingy. And then we check if this is a command which starts with S, then we do a step and otherwise we do continue. And what these commands do is if we have a step, then we, do, then we set the variable stepping, which means that uh, we continue execution 
but uh, at the very next moment and when the very next line is reached we actually go back to our debugger prompt and um, the continue command even turns this off and simply resumes execution till the very end. And you can actually try this out yourself. Um, again, we have such a, what we have here is uh, our simple debugger. And again, we use this, um, we use this mechanism here with a with clause in order to keep things simple. This is actually made such that we do not accidentally step into the Jupyter notebook infrastructure. You, not, ex not exactly sure whether you want to see that. So if we go and uh, run everything up to here, then you can execute this. Now this automatically, this automatically does a couple of inputs which we have prepared before, but you can also simply call this up. And now you can interact with the debugger, which is, well, at this point, there's not really much you can do. You can step through the program, step, step, step. That's actually pretty standard. And you can step and step and further step and continue to step and finally, you can continue execution and then you exit the function that you have been able, that you have currently been looking at. In Jupyter or more precisely in Python, it is not possible for a debugger to alter the control flow. At least there's no way that I know of. So you cannot simply come up with a premature return from that function or otherwise, you always have to execute the function call till the very end. Yeah, and um, this is just two commands, step and continue. This is very simple. And what we're doing in here is we're implementing a bit of an infrastructure, which actually allows you, wow, this is quite some stuff, which is not too interesting, but this actually allows you to come up with a single, with a single framework in which you can then add a new command simply by entering, simply by defining methods that start with the name of the command and end with underscore command. And simply by adding such a method to the debugger, you will already uh, introduce a command that has the same name as anything that it comes before the underscore. So um, in here, so and this is the, how the chapter now goes on. It introduces a print command, which actually happily prints out an individual, which, which actually prints out an individual variable and uh, come and defines one command after another, just to show how this works. We implement a list command uh, that actually shows in that actually shows uh, the individual um, that actually shows the um, current source lines in the program. I think I need to run this as a in its entirety so that you actually see what's happening in here. So um, here we have um, sorry. Let me just get back to the point where we are. So if you enter list at the debugger prompt, you can actually see the entire function. Again, you continue execution. Then we define breakpoints, which means that we, that we end in a particular line. You can also delete breakpoints. And uh, so we end up one, uh, so we define one command after another. And th this is already all there is. And if you just want to see how this works, so let's see whether this works. Ah, uh, yeah, this was just with the given command. So let's try this again. We have plenty of commands being predefined in here still. So where are we? Um, let me see. I'm just going to run everything up to here. Okay, here we go. Now we can execute this. Oh, I think our, I think this is a print delete help quit. I think our list of commands that we that, that we want to execute here is a bit garbled. So yeah, because as I'm going to restart the whole thingy. See, even with our best of our debugging capabilities, we're still having a couple, we're still having a couple of synchronization issues in here. Why is it always doing that thing here? Continue, 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 continue. Ah, break, when I say continue, print continue. Oh, okay. Good, so let me see whether I can actually start a debugger in here. So let's do that and do that again until we actually clear this list of predefined command. Ah, here we are finally, wonderful. So this is how you would normally use the debugger. So these are all the commands that we have, have defined at this point. We have break, we have continue, we have delete, help, list, print, quit, and step. List is the easiest one, you just print out the current line. Now we can again step through the program. And if list works well, it should show the actual line. So 
this little carrot here shows where you are. And now you can go and uh, actually print out individual variables. So let's see, what is the value of S? Or what is the value of all variables that we're currently having? And now you can uh, continue stepping through the program. And uh, there's also help, of course. And you can also help on individual commands, if I recall it right, help continue. So there's an entire infrastructure here with which you can actually now interact with the debugger. And in the end, in order to exit this interactive loop, you always have to say quit and then execution resumes till the very end. There's a couple of extras in the end. So you can extend the list such that it actually, you can extend the list such that it actually adds extra stuff, but this is already all there is. And this is the base for your extended debugger in the project with which you can then go and enter more commands. And um, one particular neat thing in here is, um, so here's a couple of ideas in here for more commands. And one particular thing uh, which is special for your project is so-called time travel debugging. And of course, you already have asked plenty of questions about that to Johannes and Konstantin. But the idea of a time travel debugger is actually, well, to record all the, everything that happens during an execution such that you can later, uh, such that you can later execute it. And we even have a very simple, um, very simple example of a recording. And we have a function named slider here, which actually then builds a, a very simple uh, time travel debugger which tracks, <laughs> not too much actually, it simply tracks a number of variables along the, along the way. And with this slider, you can then look up the, the variables, values in the, uh, in the lines as they were recorded. This of course is, well, uh, this is the very, very basics of a time travel debugger in reality. And uh, as, as you already have seen in the demo video from Konstantin and Johannes, you would like to have uh, the source code being displayed, maybe moving up and down the stack. And this is all the stuff for your project. This is already all there is. So you can make use of this infrastructure for your own project. And this can be lots and lots of fun. And uh, either build a command line debugger, just the command line debugger, this is simple, or actually extend your command line debugger to a into a full-fledged graphical user interface with uh, widgets or HTML, JavaScript, just as you like.